Hello, America, and welcome to Common Sense. I'm Wendy Bell. When you encourage crime by not prosecuting offenders, there's this crazy thing that happens, right? People steal, they loot, they flash mob, rob, and smash and grab while store employees kind of watch incredulously, completely impotent to act because of store owner retribution. I mean, go figure, store owner retribution. This is the stuff that's been going down in L.A. and New York lately, right? Cavalier thieves who embrace the, I get that it's yours, but now it's mine mentality. That is the point for police. Well, what are you going to do to respond, right? Perps aren't going to get prosecuted. Why would they respond? So some stores like Walgreens have secured all of their aisles behind this theft-proof plastic protection. What kind of country is this? Other stores started chaining and locking their fridges and freezers. Did you guys hear Dick's Sporting Goods lost 26, 23 percent rather, percent, 23 percent. In second quarter profits to theft, that is $74.5 million. And Target expects to lose $400 million by the end of the year. So, like, what do you do? How do you stop it? Do the blue cities where crime is out of control even want to stop it? Let's bring in our panel of America's finest communicators out there, all talk radio hosts, the host of Tony Katz Today and the Eat, Drink, Smoke radio show. Hi, Tony Katz. Also the host of Money Talk with Melanie on 98.7, the coast out of New Jersey, Melanie Collette, and the host of the Barack Lurie Show on AM870 Los Angeles talk host and author, Barack Lurie. You know what, Barack, let's start with you, my man, because I got to show you this. A guy uses a blowtorch, <laughs> a blowtorch to melt the plastic shield at Walgreens and steals $448 worth of skincare products. You cannot make this stuff up anymore. Workers just kind of like watching because they've been told, just let it happen. Is this part of the new liberal world order we're living through, out of control? Well, in fairness to that man, he really did have bad skin. So, I mean, you got to give it to him. Uh, <laughs> look, the issue is here, <laughs> they've got to be able to, to, to tone this down somehow. They got to do something about this. Look, when I was a little kid, I always wondered about the effect of the law. I'm a lawyer at, at that. And, and I, I always wondered, is it, is it the law that keeps people from doing bad things or is it their general instinctive sense of good and right, you know, right and wrong? And I, I've now come to believe that apparently it's just the law. Um, and that's just at the end of the day what it is. And we, unfortunately, we live in an increasingly godless society. And because of that, people feel more and more emboldened to do these horrific and very um, uh, you know, uh, uh, non-biblical things. So that, that's what we're doing. And what we're seeing is that this will perpetuate itself for a long time. The concern I have, Wendy, is what I call the not yet criminal, meaning <clears throat> these are, there are people out there that otherwise would follow the law, feel reluctant to disobey the law. But they look around, they see all their buddies just grabbing things and not being prosecuted, and they feel like suckers for not doing the same thing. So you're just inviting a lot more criminals out there. And that's then it just amplifies and, it, and it's a runaway train at some point. That's where I'm really concerned. Yeah, Melanie, police say organized crime was likely behind this flash rob. Flash rob, like 50 people at the Nordstrom Woodland Hills in California. You guys, this is my hometown shopping mall. That was a $300,000 hit. 50 people took minutes to clean the place out. They, they, they sell that stuff in hours. No mall security guard is going to stop that, Mel. What do you do? Listen, I read the funniest thing when I was preparing for this hit uh, in, in Newsweek, which said <laughs> that if this is being driven, uh, the cops are saying by organized crime. Newsweek mentioned that it's being driven by, get this, business people, the lower, pro I mean, the, the higher profit margins of stolen goods online. And as a business person, I thought, well, no oh, kidding. Boy. You have look, higher profit right? margin if your goods are stolen. You, right. you, you have zero uh -huh. overhead. But, it, it, but, there, but no <laughs> one said in all the articles that I read about this, no one blames the person. It was always some excuse, right. some reason. And to what Barack said uh, a little bit earlier uh, about, you know, the, the not yet criminals, or, or uh, he might have used another, mm -hmm. another word, but that's where your morality and your spirituality and your acknowledgement that there is a God who holds you accountable actually comes into play, then you'll never be a not yet criminal because you have a higher power right on. that right you on. are obligated to be obedient to. Right on. Yeah. 
I mean, and to Tony, $100 billion a year, yo, that's what retail theft costs Walmart, Target, and Home Depot. Add it up, $100 mil. What? So what are they doing to stop it? Check out these headlines in Ohio. Home Depot employees fired for pursuing shoplifting suspects. That's super. In Georgia, a Lowe's worker said she was fired after trying to stop a shoplifter at her store. In California, where a Home Depot theft prevention employee was shot and killed while trying to stop a theft. I mean, stores are encouraging theft this way. What are we doing? It, it is strange when you see these stores pretend uh, that this zero tolerance of going after the people who are engaged in the criminal activity is, is actually a positive because it keeps the employees safe. It, it goes to show that people really do in their nature oppose what it is they're seeing. Uh, but with all due respect, the problem's not the shoplifter. The problem is us. We allow this to happen. Yes. We elect these prosecutors, and we don't even recognize that it doesn't work in San Francisco, in Los Angeles, in New York, in Chicago, in my beloved Indianapolis. We have prosecutors who don't prosecute crimes. How much do you have to see? How many times do you have to be burned by the stove to realize that it doesn't work? Your policy has failed. And that's a question for these societies, for these neighborhoods. Your, your politics say this, your politics demand that, like it's some kind of Pavlovian response. Yeah. Your real world is being destroyed. Every time another one of those businesses go out, they talk about how these are victimless crimes. If the CVS at the corner goes right. out and my 85 year old father goes to that CVS for his medicine, but the next CVS is 16 miles away, it's not a victimless crime until societies demand right better, until they proactively right. push back against legislators and those prosecutors who don't prosecute, those mayors who don't do anything, they'll get this. You've done this to you. Now the question is, what's your plan? Yeah. Right. Barack, I hear you saying, yeah, 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 in the background, right? I mean, this is not complicated. This, none of this is complicated. It, it really isn't. And that's what's so confounding about it is that we know that when you have the police actually enforce these rules, then people observe these rules. It's it's just two plus two equals four. And what's so confounding is that it's happening over and over again, and they seem not to care that it's happening over and over again. So at some point, you have to conclude that they want this to happen. You, you can only, uh, what is it, uh, right. spit in my face for so long and then and, and claim that it's raining. It, it's not raining. And, and Melanie, some people are baffled by how rampant retail crime is. Well, what's baffling about it? California just passed a law making any retail theft under 950 bucks a misdemeanor. Like, don't worry about, just, just put, it, put it on your taxes. What are we doing? As if, as if $950 is no money. Uh, oh, the insurance pays for it. Right. Oh, really? Well, how many claims are you going to put in before your insurance company drops you? But you know the one thing that absolutely irks my soul about these laws that are passed and about mm. how these prosecutors are handling it? They claim that the nexus was that they're trying to um, not be racist toward black and brown people. For one thing, it perpetuates the stereotype that all black and brown people do is steal. And for another thing, as was mentioned earlier, in these black and brown communities, now they are going to be in store deserts because they don't have anything in their neighborhood because the stores can no longer afford to be there by having these laws. So actually, these laws hurt black and brown people yeah. and it ticks me right off, on. absolutely irks my complete soul. I love that you say that I'm stealing that tomorrow. Irks my soul. Boom, she's on fire. Guys, don't go anywhere because I got another segment for you. Do not go anywhere, folks at home. The green climate scam is unraveling deliciously. Why the progressives are panicking coming up next on Common Sense.